Mad Hatter, I've been meaning to ask you this for a long time. How do you make the most perfect cup of tea? Because I can't seem to get them right. One egg. I think we've got an egg. Yep, yeah, one egg. Some flour. Yep, yeah, some flour. Some salt. Yeah, are you sure? Salt? Okay. And some... What? Some snot. Alright, are you sure? Snot? Alright. Oh. Oh. And drink it. Okay. Wow, that's perfect. That's really, really nice. Oh, sorry everyone. <laughs> I didn't realise you were there. I was just asking Mad Hat. It doesn't matter. Mad Hatter knows how to distract me. You are in the right place, I promise you. We are going to read Chapter 7 of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Now, I'm just going to do a very quick recap of Chapter 6, because it has been a fantastic, amazing journey so far. Now, if you haven't um, seen the chapters before, please do click on those videos before you watch this video. Okay, so where are we up to? So we've had just quite a violent, quite a rude scene um, with Duchess. The Duchess is a very rude woman um, and she's got a baby, but we don't know whether it's a baby or if it's a, a pig. Duchess is a very angry woman um, and there's a cook in the room that keeps throwing pots and pans and plates and cutlery. And there's even one moment where it's a hair away from the baby's nose. But... Get this, the Duchess and the baby don't seem to be bothered at all by this. It's very, very odd. There's a constant mention of the Queen and playing croquet. Um, and the Duchess leaves to go and play croquet with the Queen. So this game, I think, is very relevant. So let's keep it in the forefront of our minds. Um, Alice then leaves and bumps into a grinning Cheshire cat that leads her to the March Hare. Um, well, actually... I know, I know, Mad Hatter, I know, it, it, it is, it's very rude. Cheshire Cat gives Alice an option, goes, Mad Hatter or March Hare? And Alice says, well, I've seen a bunch of Mad Hatters, I'm going to go see the March Hare. I, I, I'm just the messenger, blame Alice, alright, blame Alice, I'm just the messenger, alright? Yeah, Alice says, I've seen a bunch of Mad Hatters, I'm going to go see the March Hare. I know I'm disappointed too, but... Alice approaches, um, and then she approaches this massive, massive house. And so she eats a little bit of the mushroom to get big, bigger, bigger. So she's going different sizes all the time. Can't keep track, can't keep track. Um, to Because the house is bigger, she gets bigger. Um, and yeah, and that is where we're up to. So, everyone, I think we should just get cracking on. Because I think this is going to be really, really interesting. So this is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, presented by the Story Barn. Chapter 7. A Mad Tea Party. There was a table set out under a tree in front of the house. The March Hare and the Hatter were having tea at it. The Hatter... A dormouse was sitting between them, fast asleep, and the other two were resting their elbows on it and talking over its head. Very uncomfortable for the dormouse, thought Alice. Only, as it's asleep, I suppose it doesn't mind. The table was a large one, but the three were all crowded together at one corner of it. No room! No room! And they cried out when they saw Alice coming. There's plenty of room, said Alice indignantly. And she sat down in a large armchair at one end of the table. Have some wine, the March Hare said in an encouraging tone. Alice looked all round the table, but there was nothing on it but tea. I don't see any wine, she remarked. There isn't any, said the March Hare. Then it wasn't very civil of you to offer it, said Alice angrily. It wasn't very civil of you to sit down without being invited, said the March Hare. I didn't know it was your table, said Alice. It's laid for a great many more than three. Your hair wants cutting, said the Hatter. 
He had been looking at Alice with great curiosity, and this was his first speech. You shouldn't make personal remarks, Alice said with some severity. It's very rude. The Hatter opened his eyes very wide on hearing this, but all he said was, Why is Raven like a writing desk? Come, we shall have some fun now, thought Alice. I'm glad they've begun asking riddles. I believe I can guess that, she added aloud. Do you mean that you can th think you can find out the answer to it? said the March Hare. Exactly so, said Alice. Then you should say what you mean, said the March Hare, went on. I do, Alice hastily replied. At least, at least I mean what I say. That's the same thing, you know. Not the same thing a bit, said the Hatter. You might as well say that I see what I eat is the same thing as I eat what I see. You might just as well say, added the March Hare, that I like what I get is the same thing as I get what I like. You might just as well say, added the Dormouse, who seemed to be talking in his sleep, that I breathe when I sleep is the same thing as I sleep when I breathe. It is the same thing with you, said the Hatter, and here the conversation dropped, and the party sat silent for a moment, while Alice sought over all she could remember about ravens and writing desks, which wasn't much. The Hatter was the first to break the silence. What day of the month is it? he said, turning to Alice. He had taken his watch out of his pocket and was looking at it uneasily, shaking it every now and then and holding it to its ear. Alice considered a little and then said, The fourth. Two days wrong, sighed the Hatter. I told you butter wouldn't suit the works, he added, looking angrily at the March Hare. It was the best butter, the March Hare meekly replied. Yes, but some crumbs must have got in as well, the Hatter grumbled. You shouldn't have put it in with the, with the bread knife. The March Hare took the watch and looked at it gloomily. Then he dipped it into his cup of tea and looked at it again. But he could think of nothing better to say than his first remark. It was the best butter, you know, Alice had been looking over his shoulder with some curiosity. What a funny watch, she remarked. It tells the day of the month and doesn't tell what o'clock it is. Why should it? muttered the Hatter. Does your watch tell you what year it is? Of course not, Alice replied very readily. But that's because it stays the same year for such a long time together. Which is just the case with mine, sighed the Hatter. Alice felt dreadfully puzzled. The Hatter's remark seemed to have no meaning in it, and yet it was certainly English. I don't quite understand, she said, as politely as she could. The Dormouse is asleep again, said the Hatter, and he poured a little hot tea upon its nose. The Dormouse shook its head impatiently and said, without opening its eyes, Of course, of course, just I was going to remark myself. Have you guessed the riddle yet? The Hatter said, turning to Alice again. No, I give it up, Alice replied. What's the answer? I haven't the slightest idea, said the Hatter. Nor I, said the March Hare. Alice sighed wearily. I think you might do something better with the time, she said, than wasted asking riddles with no answers. If you knew time as well as I do, said the Hatter, you wouldn't talk about wasting it. It's him. I don't know what you mean, said Alice. Of course you don't, the Hatter said, tossing his head contemptuously. I dare you say you never even spoke to time. Perhaps not, Alice cautiously replied, but I know I have to beat time when I learn music. Ah, that accounts for it, said the Hatter. He won't stand beating. Now if you only keep on good terms with him, he'd do almost anything you liked with the clock. For instance, suppose it were nine o'clock in the morning, just time to begin lessons. You'd only have to whisper a hint to time, and round goes the clock in a twinkling. Half past one, time for dinner. I only wish it was, the March Hare said to itself in a whisper. That would be grand, certainly, said Alice thought, fully. But then I shouldn't be hungry for it, you know. 
Not at first, perhaps, said the hatter, but you could keep it to half past one as long as you liked. Is that the way you manage? Alice asked. The hatter shook his head mournfully. Not I, he replied. We quarrelled we quarrelled last March, just before he went mad, you know, pointing with his teaspoon at the March hare. It was at the great concern gi- concert given by the Queen of Hearts, and I had to sing Twinkle, twinkle, little bat, how I wonder what you're at. You know the song, perhaps? I've heard something like it, said Alice. It goes on, you know, the hatter continued in this way. Up above the world you fly, like a tea tray in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle. Here the dormouse shook itself and began singing in its sleep. Twinkle, 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 twinkle. And went on so long that they had to pinch it to make it stop. Well, I'd hardly finished the first verse, said the hatter, when the queen jumped up and bawled out, He's murdering the time. Off with his head! How dreadfully savage, exclaimed Alice. And ever since that, the hatter went on in a mournful tone. He went to do a thing. He won't do a thing, I ask. It's always six o'clock now. A bright idea came into Alice's head. Is that the reason so many tea things are put out here, she said. Yes, that's it, said the hatter with a sigh. It's always tea time, and we've no time to wash the things between whiles. Then you keep moving round, I suppose, said Alice. Exactly so, said the Hatter, as the things get used up. But what happens when you come to the beginning again? Alice ventured to ask. Suppose we change the subject, the march. Ah, interrupted, yawning. I'm getting tired of this. I vote the young lady tells us a story. I'm afraid I don't know one, said Alice, rather alarmed at the proposal. Then the Dormouse shall, they both cried. Wake up, Dormouse! And they pinched it on both sides at once. The Dormouse slowly opened its eyes. I wasn't asleep, he said in a hoarse, feeble voice. I heard every word you fellows were saying. Tell us a story, said the March Hare. Yes, please do, pleaded Alice. And be quick about it, added the Hatter. Or you'll be asleep again before it's done. Once upon a time there were three little sisters, the Dormouse began in a great hurry, and their names were Elsie, Lacey and Tilly, and they lived at the bottom of a well. What did they live on, said Alice, who always took a great interest in questions of eating and drinking. They lived on a treacle, said the Dormouse, after thinking a minute or two. They couldn't have done that, you know, Alice gently remarked. They'd have been ill. So they were, said the Dormouse, very ill. Alice tried to fancy herself what such an extraordinary way of living would be like, but it puzzled her too much, so she went on. But why did they live at the bottom of a well? Take some more tea, the March Hare said to Alice, very earnestly. I've had nothing yet, Alice replied in an offended tone, so I can't take more. I mean, you can't take less, said the Hatter. It's very easy to take more than nothing. Nobody asked your opinion, said Alice. Who's making personal remarks now, the Hatter asked triumphantly. Alice did not quite know what to say to this, so she helped herself to some tea and bread and butter and then turned to the Dormouse and repeated their question. Why did they live at the bottom of a well? The Dormouse again took a minute or two to think about it and then said, It was a treacle well. There's no such thing, Alice was beginning very angrily, but the Hatter and the March Hare went, Shh, shh, and the Dormouse sulkily remarked, If you can't be civil, you'd better finish the story for yourself. No, please, go on, Alice said. I won't interrupt again. I I dare say there may be one. One indeed, said the Dormouse indignantly. However, He consented to go on, and so these three little sisters, they were learning to draw, you know. What did they draw? said Alice, quite forgetting her promise. Treacle, said the Dormouse, without considering it at all this time. I want a clean cup, interrupted the Hatter. 
Let's all move one place on. He moved on as he spoke, and the Dormouse followed him. The March Hare moved into the Dormouse's place, and Alice rather unwillingly took the place of the March Hare. The Hatter was the only one who got any advantage from the change, and Alice was a good deal worse off, as the March Hare had just upset the milk jug into his plate. Alice did not wish to offend the Dormouse again, so she began very cautiously. But I don't understand. Where did they draw the treacle from? You can draw water out of a water well, said the Hatter, so I should think you could draw treacle out of a treacle well, eh? Stupid. But they were in the well, Alice said to the Dormouse, not choosing to notice this last remark. Of course they were, said the Dormouse. Well in. This answer so confused poor Alice that she let the Dormouse go on for some time without interrupting it. They were learning to draw, the Dormouse went on, yawning and rubbing its eyes, for it was getting very sleepy, and they drew all manner of things, everything that begins with an M. Why with an M, said an Alice. Why not, said the March Hare. Alice was silent. The Dormouse had closed its eyes by this time, and was going off into a doze. But on being pinched by the Hatter, it woke up again with a little shriek, and went on. That begins with an M, such as mousetraps, and the moon, and memory, and muchness. You know you say things are much of muchness. Do you ever see such a thing as a drawing of a muchness? Really, now, you ask me, said Alice, very much confused. I don't think... Then you shouldn't talk, said the Hatter. This piece of rudeness was more than Alice could bear. She got up in great disgust and walked off. The Dormouse fell asleep instantly, and neither of the others took the least notice of her going, though she looked back once or twice, half hoping that they would call after her. The last time she saw them, they were trying to put the Dormouse into the teapot. At any rate, I'll never go there again, said Alice, as she picked her way through the wood. It's the stupidest tea party I ever was at in all my life. Just as she said this, she noticed that one of the trees had a door leading right into it. That's very curious, she thought, but everything's curious today. I think I may as well go in at once. And in she went. Once more she found herself in the long hall and close to the little glass table. Now, I'll manage better this time, she said to herself, and began by taking the little golden key and unlocking the door that led into the garden. Then she set to work nibbling at the mushroom. She had kept a piece of it in her pocket till she was about a foot high. Then she walked down the little passage, and then she found herself at last in the beautiful garden among the bright flower beds and the cool fountains. And that is the end of chapter 7. You were a little bit rude, weren't you, Mad Hatter? Oh, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Now, we are up to uh, the next episode will be chapter 8, The Queen's Croquet Ground. Interested, interesting. So, Alice has found the garden, the beautiful garden, with among the bright flower beds and the cool fountains. Oh, I want to be there. That sounds incredible. Now, I find it really interesting, the setting. So actually, I was right at the beginning when she was at the, the hall um, with the glass table. And I was wondering when, they're, when she's going to leave. She, it felt like almost that she never did leave. It felt like the setting just changed around her, but she never actually left because there was a house that popped up out of nowhere where she met the rabbit and, and did all those other things in her journey. But it, it wasn't as so simple as she just left through the door and got out and, uh, and, and went into a new space. It was like the setting changed around her. But so interesting that the writer's chosen to go right back to the beginning again and to go to the, the garden. I think that's really, really interesting. So it seems like this place is almost a portal. This hallway is a portal to many different other rooms um, and places. Um, and the Hatter 
Wasn't the hatter brilliant? Absolutely brilliant. And the March Hare and the Dormouse. What characters. I really want to um, be there with you, actually. Drinking tea and talking absolute nonsense, but fantastic nonsense. And this interesting riddle, why is a raven like a writing desk? It's a very interesting riddle. One that Mad Hatter doesn't know. Well, everyone, thank you all so much for joining us on Chapter 7. What an amazing, amazing chapter it has been. And please do join us for Chapter 8. Thank you all so, so much, and goodbye.